So in our final tutorial, we're going to take the node that we created in our trench mud tutorial and run it through a water levels node. That's going to give us all of these different water channels that run through the inner and deeper recesses of our height map. We're going to see how we can get this effect and what are the parameters that we can change in today's tutorial. So one last and final time we're going to go up and we're just going to add a new substance graph to our stack here. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to call this trench mud watt for trench mud water. And we're going to leave all of the settings as usual. And once again we get the black box. So first off I'm going to just go and click on the trench mud material that we just created in the last tutorial and I'm going to drag and drop into our graph here. So this is the end result of last tutorial and it's got all of our maps that we had output base color, normal roughness, metallic height, and ambient occlusion. So it's got the combination or the blends of all three of our previous graphs into one node. And from this, we're going to run it through a water levels node and get water in the areas that we specify. So from here, I'm just going to hit space and start to type in water. And we're going to get the water levels node. So as we've done before, I'm just going to go up and make sure that our connection is on material because I'm lazy and I don't want to waste time hooking them up individually. So I'll run it through here. And you can see now what it's doing. So we've got this area down here that's a little bit darker and it's more of the recessed parts of our material. The water's levels is going to take that and start to add water in the various areas that we indicate via our height map. So now if I take our water levels and I bring that over to our outputs you can see we get some pretty nice looking water. However, we also need to add in our ambient occlusion output one more time. So I'll save you the trouble and we'll skip right ahead. As a force of habit, I just made sure to put the ambient occlusion into the material group just in case we decide we want to now use this graph for something else. And as you can see now, we actually don't have any information to be displayed because we need to plug in our ambient occlusion. And now we've got some stuff showing up again. And just to make sure everything is viewing properly, I just want to view outputs in 3D. And there we go. Now you can see how it's pretty easy to add water into our materials or our meshes. So from there, I'm just going to click on our water levels node and I'm going to see all of the parameters that we get with this single node and it's actually pretty versatile and pretty powerful when we get down to it. So the first one we start off with is our water level. How high on our material is our water going to be? Do we want not too much water or do we want a lot of water? Now, just as my own personal opinion, I wouldn't really crank these up in either direction. Either having it up here makes no point of even creating a base material. And obviously down here, there's really no point in even having the water levels if that's all you're going to get. Now, it's really just a case-to-case -case scenario, and if that's what you want, all the power to you. But I like something that's, you know, between 0.25 and point. 0.75 really. In this case 0.75 might be a little too high. So I'll bring it back down to maybe uh, something like we'll say 0.4. That gives us enough where I like it. We get water and we get a good amount of water but it's not overbearing with the amount that we actually have. You get a good ratio of ground the liquid. So now the next node that we get or the next parameter is our water darkness. How dark is our water going to be? 
Now if you crank it all the way back, it's going to start to take some of the albedo or diffuse color of our underlying material being our trench mud material. But if we crank it all the way up, you can see it starts to become black and almost like it's tar or something of the sorts. And that's also not what we really want in this circumstance. So I'm just going to get the light how we like it. And I'm going to take the water darkness down to about halfway because we do want it to be a little bit murkier. It is mud and it's going to be very dirty water. However, I don't want it to be too dark that it no longer looks like it's water. The edge wetness is going to indicate how dark and how affected the edges are going to be in proximity to the water. If you can see, if I change the edge wetness distance, it's going to really grow how long our actual wet edges are. If we take a look in here, right now we're at point 0.1. If I bring that up to point 0.12, you can see the stretch or the gradient is reaching out farther, meaning that our wet edges aren't just going to be along the edge here, but they're going to kind of be you know, a bigger surface area. And if I really crank this up even halfway, you can see now it's kind of covering our entire material. Now everything just looks wet and we don't want that. So I'm going to bring that right back down. Point one is a very good one. And you can see here just the contrast of, you know, darker mud to a little bit of a whiter mud that we have. And I like it at about point one. That works for me. And now the actual edge wetness is just how wet it's going to be, how dark and how reflective. If we have this all the way down, there's not going to be too much of a difference. And again, it is mud, so it's going to be relatively the same, but I'll have a little bit of a slight difference just to give it the illusion that we've actually got water on this material. If we keep going down, We've got this depth blur amount and depth blur opacity. So with our depth blur amount, it's going to blur anything that is going to be under our water. So to give an example of that, we've got this little twig in the water there. And right now we're at 0.5 blur amount. If I bring that all the way down, it's going to get a little bit clearer. There's not going to be as much blur. And if I bring that all the way up, you can see now it's starting to really blur the details of anything that we've indicated to be under the water. And now I kind of like it pretty blurry because again, it's going to be dirty, muddy water. So it's not going to be quite clear when we're looking through it. And that's looking pretty good. With the depth blur opacity, if we just bring this down, it's just going to be almost the same as the amount. However, it's just going to be the opacity of the really high amount that we put. If we put this up really high as well, it's just going to further blur things under the surface. And again, I don't want it to be that blurry. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And that looks good. So I'm going to leave that there. And now we're going to go over to our sludge color. And you can probably see that pretty well. If I just kind of move this HDI around. You can see the sledge colors in effect. And we can change that to any color we want, really. If we want it to be blue, we can make it blue. We can make it indigo. And if you're going for maybe a more radioactive environment, you might want to do something like a, a neon green or something like that to get some oozing radioactive material. Or if you're going for more of a war torn kind of look, you can get some blood however I don't want to go for that so I'm just going to go back and I'm actually going to reset that just to get us that nice brownish color because that's actually pretty close to what we want our colors to look like and what makes the most sense so feel free to change that as you will I however I'm just going to keep it as it is because it's just more of a personal taste with the sledge depth again if we bring this up you can just see that it's very very well it's, it's pretty high density. You can see it all over the puddle. If we bring that down, it's really just decreasing how much we have 
in our water. And again, I think that around 0.5, maybe a little bit less, is pretty good because I, I do like the contrast on the edges, but I also want to have a lot because it's going to be pretty muddy water. Same deal with the opacity. If we bring this down, it's just going to work as an opacity meter for you know Photoshop or something of that sort where we just indicate how much we actually want it to be visible. And I want to bring that down because I don't want it to look too much like it's a matte painting. And now this is where I think the water levels node gets really interesting is that you can actually add frost to your water materials. So if I was to click this and drag it up, you can see that now it's actually just freezing over and giving this a frost effect. And you can indicate how much you want the frost intensity if you want it to be just more like clear ice. I'll bring that back up because now we can see if we want lots of cracks or if we want a little bit less cracks. And we just change the normal format. Again, depending on which software you want, it will be different for which normal format you're looking for. Now, I don't want any frost because that wouldn't make sense in this circumstance. However, if this was mud in the winter, it would look a little bit nicer. Now, the problem with that is that I didn't add any snow effects to our mud, so it would look a little bit out of place. So that has been the last episode of our five part series when creating trench mud. Hopefully you guys have learned something from that, how you can just go from basic concept to finished result and how you're able to create various different graphs within a substance file, add those together to create a material and run that material through another node to add water to your finished result. Thanks for watching guys. Please feel free to add any feedback in the comments below because I'm always looking to improve and to help better teach you guys with the cool stuff that I learn how to do. It's been real guys. Thanks for watching. Take it easy and I'll see you next time.